Uh, thank you, Mr Chair, and thank you very much for coming in, uh, Ms Fairhead. Uh, you confirmed that this is a different role and a different job, haven't you? You said that to the Chairman. Although elements are the same. Given that, can I ask why you weren't subject to a full public appointment with open competition? Um, it wasn't my process. Um, I had been through a thorough process, as you know. Um, I was asked by both the Secretary of State and the Prime Minister if I would stay on to manage the transition and go to the end of my term. And I said, yes, it was their process, it was their decision to make. You wanted an open competition. I'm sorry? You wanted an open no, competition. No, I, I, I have always, I, and I have approached this job always on the basis that my role was to, to, to represent the public to try to get to the BBC that they want and to try and have a structure that it will best be structured for the BBC. I was very explicit in my conversations. I took myself right out of that. It was the government's, the government's decision to ask me. It was their process. Right. And because I also can see the benefits of continuity, because because if you have if you have somebody who I've been doing this I will have been doing this for two years just over two years by the end of this um, charter you know I have built up the relationships with the executive I understand the no, issues. No, I, I see all that. I'm just interested. I'm interested that you say that they approached you because it's my understanding that you approached them that you approached the Secretary of State uh, and the department. You asked them if you could stay on. Uh, as the chair, and their initial response to you was that you'd have to go through an open competition with everybody else. Isn't that correct? All I can tell you... Wasn't that their initial answer all, to you? Th there were all sorts of conversations about options. What I can say is the, the Secretary of State came and asked me, and the Prime Minister asked me to, and but I they initially said yes. told, they initially, all... they, they initially told you, and I think this is correct, they initially told you that you'd have to apply like everybody else. Can you confirm that's correct? There were all sorts of discussions and that was one of the options and it was discussed in the round. Okay, but then... But, but ultimately what happened <coughs> was they came and asked me and they said, we we, we would like you on the basis of continuing... Okay, I, I just want to explore the process because I think it's really important. Now, as I understand it, what happened after that is you approached the Prime Minister and asked him for a meeting and at that meeting you discussed the process for board appointments with them, is that correct? I'm not going to go into the exact details, but well, it's there very was, important. It, it is important, but there was there was a meeting we, with the Prime Minister. Uh, that had been set up months in advance because the white paper was about to be issued. We and talked of a series of issues and we discussed we discussed board appointments because that's a very important element. Indeed. But then at the end of that meeting, as I understand it, you asked the Prime Minister for a private meeting. And at that private meeting, you said to the Prime Minister that you'd like to continue that, that as the is, chair. That is, that is not true. There was a private meeting. It was about something different. But you asked the Prime Minister at that so, meeting. Sir, I just want to be clear. I do put it, you just said there was a private meeting, but or and. But this was not the subject. This is not the subject. So, 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 just to be clear, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, just, I, I can tell a, you absolutely clearly. A meeting with officials and then a separate meeting without officials, but not on this topic. Yes. Right. Sorry, thank you. So, you did not discuss at the private meeting the possibility of staying on as the, as the chair of the unitary board? The, the meeting, the, there was a talk in the round, all I, and I've seen all of the assertions that said I went and asked for the job. I did not. I did not. I was asked by the Secretary of State and by the Prime Minister to be, to take on this chair role, and that was how it happened. Okay, so you, you, at no point did you say to the Prime Minister, I would like to do this job? I, 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 I think this is a great job. I think it's a better job than the one I got in the sense of it's got more consistency. So you did tell the Prime Minister so, you'd like to so, do the job? So, so, so I said... If I was asked, I would be interested, but I on no account said, absolutely did not say, I must be given this job. No, of course you would. That, anyway. that would be enormously presumptuous to say to the Prime Minister, absolutely. I must be given the job. So, of course, I'm not suggesting you did, but what I'm suggesting is that I you said, asked well, him to stay I said, on. I, I, I said that I, could, I would very happily stay on 
and, and equally I could happily step aside. Okay, and were DCMS officials present when you had this conversation with the Prime Minister? I believe there were officials present. I can't, I can't say to I, I believe that the officials had actually left the room at, at that point and that the Prime Minister wasn't aware of requirements for an open selection. Uh, all, all I can say is that all through this process I've been made very clear that this, I think the BBC is important. I think that we've done a good job on behalf of the licence we paid. Yeah, I want to stick with the, pro I, I, I want no, to stick no, with the process. process. But this process was one that I said that I would willingly take it on. I had signed up for four years. No, that I don't equally, doubt. I know you I wanted the job. Equal, no, I said I, would, I could take it on equally. I could step aside. Yeah. They made the decision. They made the decision on the process. The Secretary of State asked me first and then the Prime Minister. Okay, but there have been numerous attempts to get the Prime Minister to change his mind on this, it is my understanding, including the DCMS itself. The I'm, Cab I'm not aware of any of that. Well, let me tell you, the Cabinet Secretary, um, the Cabinet Office Public Appointments Team, all have approached the Prime Minister and said that they are unhappy with the way in which your appointment was made. Um, all I know is that um, I went through an open and rigorous process. Well, you didn't. I was, you, no, you didn't. There was no, was, there was no was, process. Sorry, when I was made chair of the trust, I was. But you've already confirmed that's a different job. I, I said it was different in parts. Well, it can't both, be, a, it can't both be an entirely different job, I didn't say which you went through different. a rigorous process for, and then be virtually the same job, thus requiring no rigorous process for your new appointment. I, I have so one or the other. I have said that it is a different job, but there are many elements that are the same. Um, it was not my decision to make about whether I was appointed, nor it was decision to make about the process. See, it's what, I, what I do know is that the Secretary of State asked me, he asked me first, and the Prime Minister asked me too. Yeah, we're, we're in danger of going round in circles. No, no, it was on the basis, Mr Nicholson, of that the, the Secretary of State said to you, it was because they valued that continuity, and that was the basis of their decision, and I mean, it was I, their decision to make. I don't mean to break in, but I'm just trying to get clear on the facts of the matter. Will you excuse me for a second, John? Just so, so, just to be clear, though, Ms. Fahey, you've confirmed that there was a private meeting with the Prime Minister which did not discuss the question of whether you would be chair. We, we talked about appointments in the round, but the point of that meeting was about something different. Okay, I understand. And then, and then the and there was a further meeting, which did discuss your appointment, but that was one where DCMS officials were present. No, I got a. I, I mean, the, the Secretary of State contacted me and asked me to do the job. There wasn't a big meeting of, of officials at DCMS. I was I, asked by the Secretary I don't, of State. I, 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 well, I'm just so trying I, to get I, clear. I, what, I, what I, 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 really have, want to, I really want. To, I really want to try and, and, and pin this down because. As I say, it is my understanding that you had a meeting with the Prime Minister in which uh, you discussed this job with him, that he agreed that you could continue. There has subsequently been a great deal of controversy in Whitehall about the way in which your appointment was made. Not a personal thing about you, but about the way in which the appointment was made. And as I've said to you, the Cabinet Secretary, the Cabinet Office Public Appointments Team have both complained to the Prime Minister about the way in which your appointment was made. My and, and the reason they've done so is because your appointment has broken the rules you process. My, my understanding, um, firstly I was asked by the Secretary of State, then the Prime Minister as I've said. Um, my understanding is that the Public Appointments Commissioner was approached and he was satisfied with the process. I don't know any of the conversations to which you are referring. Well, he's been lobbying the Prime Minister to get the Prime Minister to change his mind, and the Prime Minister has refused to do so because the Prime Minister felt that he'd given you his word that you could have disappointment. Um, and this has all been covered up. And it, this I is disturbing because it sets an enormously bad precedent for public appointments because you've been shoehorned into this role without having gone through the due process that somebody in your position should do, and it's just not good enough. I, I, I think an old, an, another way of looking at it is to say that I was appointed for four years, the job has been amended somewhat. Oh, that I, so the, sorry, that's really an important distinction, because at the start 
of this conversation. I did say what you said. To, let me quote. Let me quote what you said to the chair. You said at the start of this, it's a different job. I, You're I, now saying the job has been amended somewhat. That is a huge to, change to, to in correct, the last no, 20 I'm, minutes. I'm sorry, Mr. Nicholson, to correct you. To, 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 to be clear about what I said, I said it's different, but there are many parts that are the same. So whichever way you turn it, I've said that there were many elements of the role that were the same. I took on the job for four years. I was prepared to, 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 to extend to the, to the end of four years. And to my mind, the government were looking at a situation which was two things. Do we have a board which is a, a, a transitional from getting the benefits of the trust and the executive board working together? So you've, you've, and then you have out of time. Ms. Fairhead, you have outlined all of that, and I really do get that. And, and but that, I just, I, I really do get that. But, but I really want to, 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 to summarise, because I think it's very important. It, it's clear that you had a conversation with the Prime Minister about this job. You've not denied that. Um, it's clear that there's a lot of disquiet in Whitehall about the way that this has happened. It, it's clear that the due process rules have been broken in this appointment. And the reason I think that many members of this committee find this disturbing is because all of us believe that there should be an open, transparent process for BBC appointments. Not least since we now know that the Secretary of State wishes to make it known to the selection panel who the government's preferred candidates are for the board. Tony Hall said he opposes this. I know I oppose this. Most members of this committee oppose this. So, John, consider the question as a committee. I'm talking about individual members of the committee with whom I've talked. I'm not talking for the committee in general because we'll hear what the committee's views in due course. In due course. But individual members of the committee have told me that that's their view. So you must understand why members of the public watching this are going to be very disturbed at the lack of independence and transparency which your appointment shows. And, but, but Mr Nicholson, I would say that I went through a very open, very rigorous process. In many ways, in many, many ways, the skills that I have, that I brought to the role, um, were roles that, that, that the one, the, the, the key element of the role that I didn't have on the trust was the regulatory side. That is the part that has gone. So this, I this is not so, a personal attack on so, you. This is about. So, this so, is. You, so you, I, many I, fine, I understand. I understand. Ms. Fairhead, you have many fine qualities. Yes. This, I'm, I'm sure your, your friends and colleagues would agree with that. This is not a personal attack on you. This is a critique of the process. And if I am criticising you in any way, it is this. I think it's entirely inappropriate for you to approach the Prime Minister and lobby for a job I rather than not. going through I, due process. I, honestly, Mr Nicholson, I think that is a total overstatement of what I said to you. I had a meeting with the Prime Minister to discuss a whole range of things on the Charter. I absolutely, explicitly did not lobby him for the, for the role. It was a decision taken by the Secretary of State who asked me and then the Prime Minister confirmed it. So I absolutely deny totally your categorization of that. I agree with you that you need open, rigorous processes, but I also think that you need to have some continuity to go into this board because, as you will know, whenever you start a board of a new of an organization, if people don't understand that organization, the, the risk of things falling between the cracks and th people not being held to account is much higher. That's an argument, that's, for, that's an that's, argument for cosy ongoing appointments rather than open, transparent.